humans require vital nutrients for appropriate maturation and human food, aka crops, require tons of high-end fertilizers for better growth. That's what we've been hearing all our lives, right? But what if the second part isn't all that true? We hate to burst your bubble, but word around the street is that a new study has just negated everything we knew about fertilizers producing high crop yields. Well, maybe not entirely negated. Let us explain. First up, what's all the hype about fertilizers? In the 1960s and 1970s, the world saw an immense change in how agriculture was looked at. Many countries went on to build large and complex irrigation systems and work towards what they called the Green Revolution, with the real hero of this evolution being synthetic nitrogen, which changed the world of agriculture completely. And this nitrogen came in heavy packets of a product that people called a fertilizer. So, due to a high nitrogen content, fertilizers definitely increased crop yields and resulted in a lot of food and income security for many families across the world. They were, and continue to be one of the most readily available resources of nutrients for plants to eat up. But it really doesn't take much time to go from hero to zero, does it? We definitely mean no disrespect, but anything in excess is not good, and fertilizers prove to be no different. As weird as it sounds, we're here to tell you that fertilizers can be both a blessing and a menace. As Thanos says, we must strive for balance, and it shall bring balance, as all things should be. So, let's dive into how the perfect balance can be brought. Next, why is this recent study making headlines? Alright, so drumroll please, wait for the big announcement. A recent academic study found that farmers can continue to produce high crop yields with the use of fewer artificial fertilizers, given that they adopt environmentally sustainable practices. While this peculiar discovery sounds impossible, it'll all start to make sense once we tell you what these practices are and how they can easily substitute the use of excessive, high-end fertilizers. The study revealed that a substantial amount of artificial fertilizers could be reduced by using some traditional techniques. These include practices like adding manure and compost to soils, growing nitrogen-fixing plants in areas between crops, and cultivating a wide range of crops instead of the same type. As a substitute for artificial fertilizers, these practices can result in a high crop yield while also reducing the drastic effects of excessive use of fertilizers. So the answer is yes, we can reduce fertilizer use without sacrificing food production. We don't blame you for being in shock already, but before discussing the architecture of this godsend study, let us make your day even better. The good news is that the study successfully showed that using sustainable farming techniques doesn't increase the crop yield when used with high-end fertilizers, but produces some of the greatest yields when nitrogen is used in the soil. This, as a result, reduces the burden on the use of an artificial fertilizer for better output. So how exactly did this study work? Have no doubts that the study we're talking about is as legit as it gets. After a decade-long trial, the results produced what could go on to count as one of the greatest discoveries in the agricultural and farming sector. The scientists part of this research project analyzed around 30 experiments on farms in Europe and Africa to figure out how the use of natural farming methods could help change and improve crop yield. Oh, and we forgot to mention that each of the experiments examined for the study continued for a minimum of 10 years. Altogether, the study included results from 25,000 harvests of six major crops, including wheat, corn, oat, barley, sugar beet, and potatoes. Yikes, that sounds like a lot of work, but nobody minds a long day at the office if it means unearthing such groundbreaking information, right? While you might still call them insane, it was essential to follow such long-term experiments to ensure no one could raise their fingers at the reliability of the study later on. After the analysis part was over, the research put forward some conclusions, out of which some of the most interesting ones state that the addition of animal manure to the soil was found to boost yields more than the addition of plant-based compost, and growing a wide range of crops also helped develop a stronger defense mechanism against weed diseases. You heard it right, fellas. Plants don't like weed anywhere near them. Let's take a lesson or two, shall we? Moving on. How is this study a knight in shining armor for the current economic crisis? Fertilizers are real bad boys when it comes to their excessive use in farming. They portray themselves as a drug that farmers cannot live without, but then go on to act as a parasite for our environment and ecological system, and also put farmers into a huge debt due to their soaring prices. The similarity with drugs really is uncanny, isn't it? The discovery of substantially less usage of fertilizers still producing a high crop yield can turn out to be a game changer in many ways. Due to high fuel prices since the Ukraine crisis, the price of fertilizers has soared and rocketed to an all-time high. In such circumstances, less reliance on these bad boys will definitely come in handy. As stated by Chloe McLaren, a plant ecologist at Rotham Steed Research in the UK, who is also the lead author of this paper and study, that reducing reliance on chemical fertilizers would help to buffer farmers and consumers against economic shocks, such as the current spike in fertilizer costs and consequent in 
increase in food prices. It would be concerning to hear that the fertilizer prices have more than tripled recently. We all know the devastating effects of COVID-19 on world trade, but the issue was aggravated by the Russia-Ukraine crisis since the two countries are the world's largest fertilizer producers. Poor, innocent fertilizers ended up as collateral damage, and this resulted in an inaffordably high fertilizer price for many crop producers, which broke the backs of many food-deprived and famine-hit countries, also culminating in a global food crisis. Therefore, any measure of thanking the researchers for this study would be an understatement, and we're here to thank them as much as possible. Additionally, how can this study improve our ecological systems? The above-mentioned reasons are not the only way that this recent study is a lifesaver. As communicated earlier, our ecological system isn't a great friend of fertilizers, and the reason for this strained friendship lies in the fact that the fertilizer didn't keep its end of the bargain and turned out to be a snake, like most friendships these days. Well, first off, excessive use of our dear old Mr. Fertilizer's ingredients can cause lung and respiratory irritations among humans, but that's not all the damage it's causing. Sadly, it's also been found guilty of damaging plants and soil fertility. When it rains, its contents get washed up from under the soil in the process of leaching, and end up in nearby water bodies, ensuing in the environmentally hazardous process of eutrophication. It's no doubt that very recently a complaint was filed by poor old Mr. Fish, who lamented upon the loss of his friends since the algae bloom caused by eutrophication blocked sunlight from reaching into the water bodies, therefore hindering the growth of marine life. I think now we know exactly why the phrase, excess of everything is bad, was coined. A very probable conclusion from a lesser usage of fertilizers could thus result in a much safer environment around us, and also help relieve the economic crisis, which has now culminated into a fully bloomed food and health crisis around the world. Lastly, what steps need to be taken next? While this recent intervention is, without a doubt, a groundbreaking discovery indeed, we don't know how quickly the effects of this study will actually reach the population, especially because farmers mostly reside in more rural areas and countries that are developing in nature. So, many of those in this agricultural sector are used to traditional ideas and often are hesitant towards change. They also want a good crop result without a lot of effort being put in, and in this, they end up using fertilizers in unsustainable amounts. The key definitely lies in awareness amongst the masses. It's a blessing that changes in most farming practices can be done quickly and very efficiently. For example, using the careful application of animal manure to improve soils or growing cover crops is a practice that can be applied without much hesitation. As tough as it may sound, it's about time that we start changing how most people look at farming practices, and to do this, our very own Darling study is an essential stepping stone as McLaren quotes that using ecological farming methods have effects far greater than just the yield, going on to lower the food prices as well as improving our surrounding environment. So gear up, people. The farming world is up for some system overhaul, and we can't wait. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about this exciting new study? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.